thank you for coming to Zucchini. We're doing zucchini burgers, zucchini casserole, and zucchini soup. And I made notes for myself to thank the people that I should thank. I tend to forget. I'm very grateful for all of their help, but I tend to forget. Francoise Pitzner, Peggy Watson. Watson, I know that, I know that. <laughs> I'll come back to you. Faith Gruber and Sue Garski, and Ann Craft and Janet Ray. Ann Craft and Janet did the tables, aren't they gorgeous? <laughs> and then, of course, Lindsay, who runs the cafe here. She's the sous chef today. So after we eat all of our zucchini, or I've made the zucchini, Lindsay's going to tell us and show us what? Pulled pork tacos. Pulled pork tacos with homemade kimchi. Kim mm. All right. All right. I wanted to thank Laura Tim from the Art Center for helping. Robert and his wife from UW Sheboygan Green Bay. Remember, we're being filmed. So, Robert, how do they see the show at 11 o'clock on Saturdays? Say it. I know, but how do they find it on their... Oh, they can either go to channel 990 on cable, or they can go to our website, wscs.com, and you can uh, play it over the internet. So you can see it. Now, I will tell you an interesting thing about this. So I figure, you know, there's 12, 16 people who watch that, and I'm one of them. <laughs> but... I've heard from, from the staff that a couple of states in New England have taken the show. So don't you, don't you know, good Sheboygan, <laughs> that it has to be so entertaining. We're very casual here, and you know our Sheboygan accent has to be so interesting for them to hear compared to the main accent. Now, my Diane, who lives in a little north of San Francisco, and she's going to be 60 years old. Oh, my God, how can that be? Anyway, um, she lives in a little community of maybe 300 people. And one of the people there that she met 20 years ago is Claire Patak. Claire Patak has a cookbook called Violet. She has a bakery in London named Violet. And the Violet Bakery makes cakes for the queen. So anyway, I was talking with Diane in her little town north of San Francisco, and Claire was visiting, and she was interested in hearing about Maryland's cooking class, so we're going international. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Now, in the back, there's Liz Giovanetti and her son Tristan, and Liz and I started the cafe at the Art Center when they started the cafe at the Art Center in the year 2000. She and her husband and son live in Atlanta now, but they have their vacation home in Sheboygan, and they're here right now. Tristan just finished an Eagle Scout project, putting a bench. Flowers from the senior center were transplanted, and a bike rack on the walking trail behind the old wigwam factory, which is now, what's that called? Hops Haven, yeah, okay. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Tristan. Okay. Who did I forget? I think I... I think... Uh, Judy Clark's in the kitchen. Okay. All right, let's start with the soup. Who would think it could be so easy? Trim off the little butt end and this end, and then you into the soup kettle. I have lots of soup made. This one won't be done in time. So we, we cut the cucumber, the cucumber, right? <laughs> I sometimes use wrong words, so just call it to my attention if I forget. Some bacon. You have your recipe. Raw bacon. And this happens to be the one that was on sale. I need my big you? knife. Yeah, and just put it in here. And then some water. 
and some onions, which I do not have, so I'm going to put in, yeah, and then another one like, well, this is enough. Water, some onions, these are dried. It cooks in about 45 minutes, an hour, until it's soft. That's it. Then, after it is cooked and it is soft, let it cool. Then you can put it in your food processor or blender, like this, to puree. And this is a fabulous blender, oh my god. But not when it's hot. Because you know what happens if you put hot liquids in here and try to blend it? You'll have it on the <laughs> ceiling. So you let it cool before you do that. Or if you want to do it immediately, use the handheld blender. It takes a lot longer with this to get it smooth. After you've it's cooled, you put in the bouillon cubes like it says. Put in the consomme like the recipe says. And why consomme? Because this can is extremely concentrated, extremely concentrated in flavor. So you put it in there, then knock it up a couple more notches with some beef bouillon cubes. You're going to be amazed how delicious it is. I tried it, not thinking it would work. And then I tasted it and I said, who would think zucchini soup could taste this good? And if, and if you don't think so, don't tell me. <laughs> Over there, we have a lot of condiments. And the condiments can be put onto your bowl of soup or your casserole, which I'll demo, or your zucchini burger. That's what all the condiments are for. You choose the condiments and onto which food you want to put them. Any questions about the soup? Because I'm not doing much. I'm just talking about it mostly. You can see it is not fancy. You don't have to mince or anything. You just, and even you can put in chunks of onion because you're going to puree it later. I suppose you could put in a whole onion if you wanted to, but it would take more pureeing. Any questions about the soup? Now, you notice we have no recipes for zucchini muffins or zucchini bread. Every one of you have made that many times. You do not need me to tell you anything new. To make the casserole, ground beef or ground turkey. The one I made today that's in the oven in the other room has a ground turkey in it. I have no meat in here. I'm going to put in... Again, I used all the fresh onion in the zucchini burgers, so I'm going to put in some dried onion. Carefully measured. <laughs> some garlic. Would you look in the... Oh, never mind. Here's the garlic. Mm -hmm. Cloves of garlic. If you don't have cloves of garlic, don't let that stop you. You can use garlic powder. It's not exactly the same, but it's almost the same. I, un I work under the rule, if you have to do perfection, you don't get much done in this world at all. <laughs> and some salt. That's, I'm browning all of this with that meat that's not in there. Then we add some corn and a can of corn that's drained or, or, I took these out of my freezer. So let's cut some of this. And I put them in either water or the microwave, cook them, wrap, cool them, wrap them. And that's great. Just like that. Okay. Yes. The oven? I mean, a microwave oven. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Oh, regular oven. Well, because that would be so drying, you would have to maybe put them into a roaster with a lid. Because you want to cook the corn, but you're not doing a corn roast like you're going to eat with the barbecue. But I have done um, just 
when I had the graduation party for Jay, gosh, she's going to be 49, my God, um, <laughs> brat fry, of course. We did roasted corn, and what I did was I had two big roasters in the oven filled with corn on the cob with all the, the husks, everything on it. And then I let them steam, because it steams if you put them in the oven like that. Take them out, put them next to the, uh, the quart jar, three-fourths filled with water, and a pound of butter melted in it. You dip the corn in there, pull it out, and the butter stays on the cob of corn, and you have that tail to hold on to to eat. But you still better be outside, because you know you're drippy. And some, let's put this zucchini in there. Lindsay, can you give this a stir? And I will put in, we put in the corn. Let's put in the beans, garbanzo beans. And of course it has some liquid here, so that cup, I, if you give that cup to me, I'll put the liquid into that cup. This is a, rec a record, a recipe from Vicki. Vicki, Vicki? Okay, Vicki. And um, she cooks at the synagogue, and she made this for the synagogue. They loved it. So I said, well, if the synagogue loves it, we'll love it. And besides, if Vicki made it, you know it's tasty. Tomatoes. And the diced tomatoes that uh, are Italian kind of will break up a little bit, but they'll still be diced. The American ones have what in it? Something to keep them firm. And no matter how much you cook the diced tomatoes that come from Del Monte or something, those diced tomatoes will stay diced. They will never become soft ever. So take your pick, which you like. I, I picked the ones that will soften somewhat. Oh, and you know what? Ch this is chili already diced. This is one, not even what I was expecting. I thought I had taken the diced tomatoes. <laughs> but it'll work. You know it'll work. Diced green chilies, I used the mild. You can use the hot if you'd like. I used to love the hot, but now I like the mild. And of course, it works better with a can opener that isn't quite so old. We've got it. Look at that. I put in the corn, I put in the beans. We've got the pretend make-believe turkey or beef in there. Or the tofu meat, that would work too. Chilies, cumin, let's do cumin. And cumin tastes, smells like chili powder. And it also smells like curry powder. And why do you suppose that is? There's lots of cumin and chili powder, and there's lots of cumin and curry powder. Chili powder. Oregano. I did not have oregano at home, so I brought some basil. Someone had given some basil to me. I dried it and put it in there. Now, to me, basil is a little milder than oregano. Oregano has more punch. I like the mild. Paprika, the Hungarian paprika. Whoops. Or the smoked paprika. Zucchini. So you can see it's ready to eat just like that. And cheese.
Any questions on the casserole? And we made more of it. Yes? No, do not. Unless you have a real big one. If you, then it's really tough. Then you have to peel it. But the small ones, peel and all. Please keep the peel. Yes. And I did wash them this morning. I did. I did. Casserole. Okay. I bet some salt and pepper would help. Let's <laughs> test it. Let's see. Mm -mm. It tastes good as it is. Lindsay, see what you think. Somebody here want to try it too and give me their opinion? Good. Sure. All right, here. I don't want to walk in front of you. Go around, Robert. Yes. So how long do you cook that? I mean, because the zucchini is raw, right? That's right. The zucchini is raw. And it can be quite raw when you're finished. It does not have to be cooked. Oh, really? Why don't you come and taste it? And you'll see we put the zucchini in there, what, five, six minutes ago at the most? So it's kind of grated. Correct. Okay. It's grated. It's ready to eat, isn't it? It's ready to eat. The soup is cooked zucchini chunks. This is the grated zucchini. I'm going to keep put this on warm. What do you eat that with? You, I eat it at, at home with a fork or a spoon, and I do put lots of condiments on top just to make it extra fancy. It does not need the condiments, but I like it. But that's not for the soup. This is not for the soup, nope. The soup was just the raw zucchini, the raw bacon, the water, and the onions boiled together, and then the consomme and the bouillon cubes added. That's the soup. Oh. This is the casserole. Usually we think a casserole should go in the oven, but it's fine in this electric skillet. How long do you it? It's ready now. It's ready now. Now, we added cheese to the one that's in the kitchen, so we cooked it long enough so the cheese would melt and it was plenty warm. Ooh, they're bringing the burgers, all right. Let's get this out of the way. That's fine, yes. Yeah. I grated the zucchini into the casserole. I chunked it into the soup. I grated it for the casserole. And I grated it for the burgers that we're going to talk about next. And of course, I put all of the grated zucchini into the burgers and the casserole. I forgot to save some to show you the burger. So pretend I have more zucchini here. And the zucchini, grated zucchini, grated zucchini, some flour, some eggs, some onion, salt, pepper to make it flavorful. Make a patty. Put a little flour on it, egg and panko crumbs. Now. This morning, the volunteers discovered that was a sloppy, sloppy mess because the zucchini I had grated ahead of time and it was kind of wet. So if you grate it ahead of time, squeeze it out. So with their wet zucchini, they did not flour it and egg it. They just rolled the patties in the panko crumbs. Do we all know what panko crumbs are? That's the breadcrumbs that are really nice and crispy. Or you can use breadcrumbs. Or you can use saltines crushed. Or Ritz crackers crushed. Any kind of anything just to get a nice uh, crust on them. Then you can fry them in olive oil and butter. Now to make zucchini burgers for 50 people, 
we did not fry them in skillet. We ma they made the little patties, put them in the panko, put them on a big tray with lots of oil on the bottom, olive oil and vegetable oil, put them in the oven and baked them till they were crispy and done. So you can do the same thing at home. You do not need to fry them. You have to turn them on the oven? We did. After they were completely done on the bottom, right. And now they're nice and firm. Because you do know making a zucchini burger is going to be sloppy in a frying pan. You're all cooks. You know that would happen. So with a sheet tray at home, or a cake pan with sides on it, put a little a layer of oil on the bottom, put the patties in there, put them in the oven. What temperature? Oh, I, what did we do? 375, 375 for 20, 25 minutes, something like that. Does that make sense? And zucchini burgers. Again, all the condiments that you want. We've got cheese, sour cream, ketchup, mustard, black olives, and also some pickled onions and pickled peppers that I made at home. So you'll like that. Does any of that have any questions? And because I used all the crumbs in everything else, I was going to tear up this bread to put into this pretend zucchini burgers. <laughs> Sometimes I get ahead of myself or behind. Okay. I'm going to get this off of here. Oh, the stock. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lindsay. I'm going to show you how to make stock. Vicki is going to put all the, th I save the onion peels, the carrot peels, the broken parsley, the bones. garlic. Yeah, bones, that's a pork bone. <laughs> oh, what's this? Corn cob. <laughs> Add some flavor to the stock. Tear open these bags. She's been collecting for a while. She likes to make a lot of stock. I do. So those are more bones. Sometimes I have plastic have bags inside of plastic bags. Well, I know where this all came from. This was from Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah that you cooked at the synagogue. Yeah, all the... A lot of onion peelings and carrot peelings. Now, my freezer does get full of all of these peelings and ends and the garlic they end up not using and the ends of the parsley. But it makes Parsley. it makes great stock. Beautiful stock. We're not going to cook it here. I'm going to take it home and cook it because <laughs> I'm not going to slosh. Peelings. Lots and lots of bones. Yep, bones. Chicken bones. Rotisserie bones, pork chop bones, beef bones. If you want it pure, just beef, then you'll have to use just beef. But I don't. I just boil all the bones and all the veggie ends I have. And then I let it cool and I take out all the bulk and I have the broth left. Now it is cloudy. If you want clear broth, like you get at the grocery store, then you've got to do egg whites and all sorts of things. I just leave it cloudy. I put it in quart jars in the freezer and then take out the quarts of stock as I need it. So how long do you save all your stuff before you can get enough to make stock? I, this was pro knowing this class was coming, this was probably four or five, maybe six months. Yep, that's exactly what I do. I put it in the freezer. I took this all out of the freezer this morning. And it, some of it is still frozen. Yep. <laughs> and a lot of onion skins work great. Yes. Do you uh, strain it? I strain it. Yes, I do. So the bulk is gone. Right. <laughs> and this she will be taking home and making stock. Yeah, right. <laughs> 
making a lot of soup. <laughs> Can't get much liquid in there. How do you get much broth out of it? Yep. What about this? Yep. What do I have here? This is onion ends, celery ends, more chicken bones. Okay, how much broth would you get out of it? Six or eight quarts. This is so full, and I put in enough liquid so that I can see it, and then I let it cook. I taste it afterwards, or halfway through, and if it seems bland, then I'll put in some salt and pepper. If it still seems bland, then you use some bouillon cubes. Because at the end, we, I wanted to taste good. And, and I love making stock. It's kind of making good food out of garbage. <laughs> right. OK, Lindsay. And Lindsay provided her recipes too. Are they on? Yes, they are. Place? They're on the last sheet of paper. Okay. So I'm not going to do. I'm just going to talk and walk you through the process of our pulled pork tacos. We serve out of the culinary art cars are, um, at the Love It Amp series. I don't know if any of you were there. Yep. Are we there? Absolutely. That's a big hit of ours. So on your sheet, this is about a two-day process that we do this pulled pork. So we have. For in the cafe, we have big butts of pork, but obviously in the store, you'll probably have like a five five pounder. And the butts and the shoulders work the best, mm -hmm. not the tenderloin. Correct. Because the tenderloin is too lean and it gets tough and dry. Correct. But the butt, uh, the shoulder is the shoulder, mm -hmm. and the butt is the piece of meat that butts up against the shoulder. Yes, correct. So we like the the butt with the bone in it because it's going to give you more flavor when you're roasting it. So we start with our dry rub and you can see all those ingredients we just mix into a bowl and then with the pork but we make deep cuts into the fat cap. So we get all of that rub inside that pork. And keep the fat on it. Keep the fat on it, absolutely. Um, then what we do the next day we let that sit overnight and then the next day we roast it. And in your roasting pan, we put um, apple cider vinegar that helps break down. Or the juice flowers. left over from all your dill pickles. OK. OK, <laughs> go ahead. Or that, that's good too. Yep. Um, apple cider, chipotle peppers. It's going to have a little bit of a kick to it. And then also um, some water, because it's going to cook in the oven for at least six hours. And then take it out break it all apart, let it sit in those juices, because that's just more flavor added to it. The longer it sits in the juices, more of the juices sucked up into the meat. Correct. Then we make our sweet chili garlic mayo. Super simple. We get this, um, it's called maypoi, it's sweet chili sauce. You can get it at the Union Market. Mix this with some mayo, and you have your sauce. That's perfect. That's it. Easy peasy. Then we make house-made kimchi. Kimchi is a Korean cabbage. This is what it looks like, and it is spicy. What I do is I take Napa cabbage and I soak it overnight in salted water. That, can, that makes it limp and um, easy to break down when you add all the other liquid to it. Then the next day, I cut it up and I add grated carrot, um, daikon radish, scallions, cilantro, ginger, garlic, and sambal. Sambal is a, a garlic chili. I can't bring that with me, but you mix that all together and you let that sit for at least a month to let all those flavors Ooh, really marinate. Okay. And it's, it's a punch. If you like spicy, it's spicy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then we assemble the tacos. We just get a flour tortilla, or if you like corn tortillas, that's perfectly fine. They're harder to handle. Right, exactly. 
Um, you put your pork in there, you put your sauce, some kimchi, and then we sprinkle some cilantro on top, and then you have your taco. So I will make some up so everybody can try it. It is going to be a little spicy, so I, maybe I'll put this kimchi on the side yeah. for those yeah. of you who yeah. don't like spice. Yeah. But, yeah. Yes. In place of the chipotle, yeah. for the um, you could just leave it out. You could just make like a sweeter scrub. Um, I in the past I used to do. I took out the chili, the um, uh, the chipotle peppers, and I added more sweetness. So I did like roasted apple in there with the apple mm. cider and the apple cider vinegar. You put a little honey in there. You can do anything. Okay. Yeah. And still put it on the bun. I absolutely. mean, on the tortilla. Or you could. Or on the bun. Yeah, absolutely. Roast a pork butt, add some flavor, and yeah. start eating. Mm -hmm. And then you can save that pork butt bone for yep. your stock. Yep. And I'm guessing that pork fat mm -hmm. all gets broken up back into the meat. Correct. Not discarded. Right. That's up to you. I always put the. When I do a beef roast or a pork roast and I have it on, as uh, creamed on toast or in a bun, I break up all the fat and mix it with the meat. It's like butter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Now, right. some cardiologists <laughs> might disagree. <laughs> but so I'm. Is this recipe actually for the 20, uh, the 20 pounds? Because I'm looking at the seasoning. We broke it down a little bit. Okay. I mean, it's still a lot okay. for the home cook, but. Okay. It can go in the freezer. It can. It freezes very well. <laughs>